What's up, Jaguars? Mr. Crowder here for Tuesday, December 8th. Happy day. Good morning. So we are going to finish up Act 2, Scene 3 today. If you remember, and hopefully you're watching these videos in, uh, in order, uh, Mr. Van Dam was just caught stealing bread from the food safe. Uh, they only have a certain amount of food to go around. And um, they start... And so there's this big fight between the Van Dans and the Franks, and Mr. Frank's trying to calm everybody down. And Mr. Dussel starts dividing up food like the potatoes, and that's what he's doing right now. As I pick up the reading on page 179, line 66 at the top. That is just what's happened. Mr. Van Dan has been caught stealing food. It's late night, super early morning, like 3, 4 in the morning, I imagine. And... Um, that's where we pick things up. Top of page 179, line 66. Here we go. Dussel, dividing the potatoes into piles. Miss, Mrs. Frank, Mr. Frank, Margot, Ann, Peter, Mrs. Van Dan, Mr. Van Dan, myself. Mrs. Frank, the buzzer sounds in Meep's signal. Mr. Frank, it's Meep. He hurries over, getting his overcoat and putting it on. Margot, at this hour? Mrs. Frank, it is trouble. Mr. Frank, as he starts down to unbolt the door. I beg you, don't let her see a thing like this. Mr. Dussel, counting without stopping. Anne, Peter, Mrs. Van Dan, Mr. Van Dan, myself, Margot. Stop it! Stop it! Dussel. Mr. Frank, Margot, Anne, Peter, Mrs. Van Dan, Mr. Van Dan, myself, Mrs. Frank, Mrs. Van Dan. You're keeping the big ones for yourself. All the big ones. Look at the size of that. And that. Dussel continues on with his dividing. Peter, with his shirt and trousers on, come from, comes from his room. Margot. Stop it! Stop it! We hear Meep's excited voice speaking to Mr. Frank below. Meep, Mr. Frank, the most wonderful news. The invasion has begun. Mr. Frank, go on, tell them, tell them. Meep comes running up the steps behind Mr. Frank. She has a man's raincoat on over her night clothes and a bunch of orange-colored flavors in her hand. Flowers, excuse me. Meep, did you hear that, everybody? Did you hear what I said? The invasion has begun. The invasion. They all stare at Meep, unable to grasp what she is telling them. Peter, where? Mrs. Van Dan, when? When, Meep? It began early this morning. Mrs. Frank, oh, Mr. Van Dam, did you hear that? Dussel embraces Mrs. Van Dam. Peter grabs a frying pan and parades around the room, beating on it, singing the Dutch national anthem. Anne and Margot follow him, singing, weaving in and out among the excited grown-ups. Margot breaks away to take the flowers from Meep and distribute them to everyone. While this pandemonium is going on, Mrs. Frank tries to make herself heard above the excitement. Mrs. Frank, how do you know? The radio, the BBC... They said they landed on the coast of Normandy. The British? Meep. British, Americans, French, Dutch, Poles, Norwegians, all of them. More than 4,000 ships. Churchill spoke. And General Eisenhower. D-Day, they call it. Mr. Frank, thank God it's come. Mrs. Van Dan, at last. Meep. I'm going to tell Mr. Crayler. This will be better than any blood transfusion. Mr. Frank. What part of Normandy did they land, did they say? Meep. Normandy. That's all I know. I'll be up the minute I hear some more news. She goes hurriedly out. Mr. Frank. To Mrs. Frank, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Mr. Frank indicates that he has forgotten to bolt the door after me. He hurries down the steps. Mr. Van Dam, sitting on the couch, suddenly breaks into a convulsive sob. Everybody looks at him, bewildered. Mrs. Van Dam, putty, putty, what is it? What happened? Please, I'm so ashamed. Mr. Frank comes back up the steps. Oh, for God's sake. Don't, putty. Margot, it doesn't matter now. Mr. Frank, going to Mr. Van Dam. Did you hear what Meep said? The invasion has come. We're going to be liberated. This is a time to celebrate. He embraces Mrs. Frank and then hurries to the cupboard and gets the cognac in a glass. Mr. Van Brand, to steal bread from children. Mrs. Frank, we've all done things that we're ashamed of. Anne, look at me, the way I've treated Mother. So mean and horrid to her. No, Annika, no. Oh, Mother, I was. I was awful, Mr. Van Dan. Not like me. No one is as bad as me. Do so. Stop it. Let's be happy. Mr. Frank giving Mr. Van Dan a glass of cognac. Here, here, schnapps, laheim, which means, uh, schnapps is German for a drink, and laheim means to life. It's a Hebrew toast. Van Dan takes the cognac. They all watch him. He gives them a feeble smile. Anne puts up her fingers in a V for victory sign. As Van Dan gives an answering V sign, they are startled to hear a loud sob from behind them. It is Mrs. Frank, stricken with remorse. Mrs. Frank, when I think of the terrible things I said, Mr. Frank, Anne, and Margot hurry to her, trying to comfort her. Mr. Van Dan brings her his glass of cognac. Mr. Van Dan, no, no, you were right. 
that I should speak that way to you, our friends, our guests? Stop it. You're spoiling the whole invasion. As they are comforting her, the lights dim out, the curtain falls. Anne's voice. This is her writing in her diary. We are all in much better spirits these days. There's still excellent news of the invasion. The best part, of, part about it is that I have a feeling that friends are coming. Who knows? Maybe I'll be back in school by fall. Ha ha. The joke is on us. The warehouse man doesn't know a thing, and we are paying him all that money. Wednesday, the 2nd of July, 1944. The invasion seems temporarily to be bogged down. Mr. Crayler has to have an operation, which looks bad. The Gestapo have found the radio that was stolen. Mr. Dussel says they'll trace it back and back to the thief, and then it's just a matter of time till they get to us. Everyone is low. Even poor Pim can't raise their spirits. I have often been downcast myself, but never in despair. I can shake off everything if I write. But, and this is the great question, will I ever be able to write well? I want to so much. I want to go on living even after my death. Another birthday has gone by. So now I am 15. Already I know what I want. I have a goal, an opinion. And that's the end of scene three. So, in the midst of their big argument about Mr. Van Dance stealing bread, and after their Dussel's dividing up all the remaining food, he's dividing up their potatoes at the beginning of the scene. Meep comes in with the news that D-Day is happening. D-Day was the large allied invasion of Normandy, which is a beach on the south of France. At this time, the Axis powers, which would have been Germany, Italy, and others, were occupying France. France was on the Allied side with the United States, Britain, etc., etc. And so we landed a, like hundreds of thousands of troops to come and try to free France and mainland Europe. Um, so they're very, very, very excited. They are, I mean, this is like the end of the war is in sight at this point. They can see it. All the distress about the the blackmailing and the uh, the food storage just kind of melts away. But then in Anne's diary, we get this sense of remorse that, well, yeah, the invasion's happening, but it's not happening very fast. We're still trapped. We're still stuck. And so... My question to you today, your reflection question, again, you're going to get tired of this, but put yourself in their shoes. What would be your emotions after, like, tell me about this kind of whirlwind that you would go through um, from having to almost kick somebody out to understanding that the invasion's happening to then having the uh, at, in, in Anne's diary here, we get this uh, feeling that uh, things aren't going as well and that they think they're going to get caught before the invasion happens. So I want you to reflect and write a little bit about that whirlwind of emotion. Uh, see if you can put yourself in their shoes, what you would be feeling, what you would think. And um, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Have a great day.